Hello again, it's your friendly neighborhood host, J.T. Wheatley, back for another episode of the History Comics Podcast. This time, in addition to classics with the Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite, which is the first six-issue limited series by uh, Gerard Way and Gabriel Ba, about uh, a sci-fi fantasy series in which 42 uh, women inadvertently have super-powered children all on the same day, even though many of them weren't even showing pregnancies. And of these, seven of them are adopted by the Monocle slash Gabe Reginald Hargraves, who founds the Umbrella Academy and turns these young superpower kids into a superhero group under the same name. Fast forward to nine years later, uh, the, the group's now reuniting at, at the Hargrave's uh, funeral, only to have them to deal with a new threat. This is a classic and quite frankly crazy uh, series that, yes, Jared Way is the guy from uh, the Black... Uh, my Chemical Romance, but he actually is a pretty darn good writer, but he writes in his own way. I mean, this thing is, is in many ways satirizes superhero and fantasy genres in every way imaginable, and it's matched by Gabriel Ba's artwork, which is very cartoony and stylized and matched perfectly with how crazy the story is. And it's like Hargrave is just, he's, he's, he's kind of crazy about how he takes these kids, and, and he even makes fun of it has superhero kids, and these kids get into some big, really bad situations. Like one gets their arm chopped off, he berates one for not having superpowers. It's crazy and then it gets even crazier when they become adults and finally one guy has a his head attached to a gorilla's body and in pure insanity but just lots of fun great humor sense of humor and definitely something a little different yeah if you look and of course this is had uh, two more series after this the first one won the eisner uh, back in the 2008 for Best Limited series, and Ray would do uh, two more series after this, and of course it became the Netflix uh, series as well. So yeah, all in all, a very fun uh, comic book, very unique, uh, for more acquired taste, but I enjoyed it a lot. So if you're looking for a classic and unique comic book, look no further than The Umbrella Academy, because that is a true classic. got to talk. Yeah, Thunder Talk. We're going all kinds of sideways with that sweet nerd junk. Woke nerd junk. It's topical. Political. Dare I say radical. We've got all your latest news and reviews. Hot music. And a whole lot of comedy. But it ain't for kids. Definitely mature content. So let's talk. Let's talk Thunder Talk. Thunder Talk is a proud member of the ESO Network. Now it is uh, May 11th, uh, 2023, time for the favorite comic of the week. Batman White Knight Presents Generation Joker, number one, by uh, Katana Collins, uh, Clay McCormick, Sean Murphy, and Mirka Adolfo, which is a great uh, spinoff following up the events of uh, Batman Beyond the White Knight, in which uh, the Joker and the Harley Quinn's kids, uh, Bryce and Jackie, end up going on a road trip with the hologram projection of their father, Jack Napier, who, incidentally, they never got to meet in person. And it's kind of like a uh, father-son-daughter bonding trip, as the hologram reveals is about to die off and that's supposed to spend time with his children let him know who he really was before he eventually disappears completely but of course this uh, doesn't go as planned because Joker has some enemies along the way and of course their mother Harley Quinn is coming right after him though she runs into some familiar faces too once again, the the white the Batman White Knight uh, universe in this Black Label Elseworlds uh, un- label is one of my favorite Batman universes in recent memory. Just uh, I love how everything's spun together. I love how the fact that Bruce Wayne and Harley Quinn are now married and he's now stepfather to these kids. But he doesn't make much of an appearance because he's off doing their mission to, so he can uh, get out of prison and not have to go actually be a father and a uh, husband to them. To them. And, and also, I love how uh, it's actually it is a heartfelt story. It's like Jack Napier generally wants to spend time with his kids before he dies. And it's just like I have a sweet nature like, oh, wow. It's, uh, yeah, the Joker actually has that. Well, at least the same version of the Joker has a heart. And, of course, Harley's on her way to go get her children. I love how she uh, gets the hyenas, how he, her baby's taken care of. It's a great uh, one-joke moment. and But then the character she meets on the way is another classic moment that kind of integrates how Sean Murphy just picks and chooses all the best bits of all the different Batman universes to merge into this great one. So, yeah, well, that was my favorite comic of the week, uh, Generation Joker. Pick that up. And I'm going to do something a little different this week because I don't know if you heard the news. Amazing Spider-Man number 25, supposedly the biggest event in Spider-Man's uh, history since the death of Gwen Stacy came out uh, this week. 
And I didn't buy it. I just stopped by a comic store, flipped through the pages, see how horrible of a job they're still doing, and I put it back on the shelf because I have not bought a Spider-Man comic book. I've, I've maybe bought one issue here or there, but I haven't regularly bought the comic since One More Day, the biggest fiasco ever where they used Mephisto to erase him and uh, Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson's marriage. And they keep stringing along whether they're going to get them back together or not. And once again, they find another stupid, inane reason in this storyline just to keep them apart to just frustrate fans. And it's so, and it just, it, frankly, it's, it's discredited both the character of Peter Parker and Mary J. Watson. As a Spider Man in general, they refused to let him advance forward as a character. He was doing that pretty well throughout most of his history. He went from being a teenager to a college kid to an adult to married. Next step would be start having kids. Because guess what? Over in Superman, him and Lois Lane are married and have children. Over in Batman, Batman has a teenage son, Damien. Where, why can't Spider-Man uh, begin to show an advancement in his way? Because the marriage, their marriage was work. And I've heard the reason why they broke them up to begin with because, oh, Spider-Man is not romantic if he's uh, married. I know plenty of people married in real life. Romance doesn't die with the marriage. If anything, if romance dies in the marriage, so is the marriage. So it's just inane, insulting. And the worst part is Zeb Wells, who writes the comic right now, is actually a very talented writer. And John Romita Jr., who is my all-time favorite penciler, is doing great artwork. I refuse to pay for this piece. This this comment is yeah. I'm trying to keep a non explicit tag in this podcast, but this is how angry this storyline and what they've done to Spider Man over these years just makes me. I won't touch it. Hopefully, they'll finally uh, fix this and move the characters forward because, as it eventually reveals, Spider Girl becomes their daughter. Awesome character. Move forward with Spider Man, please. Marvel, good Spider Man, Mary Jane Watson back together again. Uh, let them see Spider-Man be a dad, because that'll be more, much more interesting than the drag they're putting out right now. So, uh, that rant aside, uh, join me again next week for another edition of the Classics, likely not from any of this recent Spider-Man line. And if you can, uh, go out and enjoy yourself a good comic book, and uh, if you want a good, good nice, a little weird classic, check out the Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Fleet, because that is a true, true classic. <laughs>